as I already mentioned, so um, um, right now we can start. Um, thank you so much for participating to today's webinar. Today we are going to um, discuss the data visualization and data access to Copernicus. Um, so uh, first I will g give a short introduction to Kim and what we are doing and then um, uh, Maria will present the Unda Diaz platform, and then we have got um, two presenters, Wendy and Christoph from Soglo, who will present us um, the Soglo Diaz platform, and then we will have uh, time for question and answer session. Although I would prefer to have like questions and answer after um, a discussion of each of the platforms, so probably we will we will do two question and answer sessions. One after Mario presents on the DS platform, and another one after um, the presentation of Sulu. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, um, my name is Loha. I am working an innovation consultant at Knowledge Innovation Market. Um, Background-wise, I'm an economist. I did a master in management, and right now I'm doing a um, PhD um, in distributed ledger technologies and blockchain. Um, it has been uh, almost two years that I'm working for Knowledge Innovation Market, and apart, um, I'm also project manager of uh, um, uh, the Own Project, which is a European-funded project, um, and we are um, kind of launching. Uh, op Data, open data apps um, around um, seven countries, and there are 10 partners in the project. Um, so Mario, um, Mario is a civil um, and environmental engineer with a commercial experience in the geo uh, spatial and space industries. Currently, he's working and as business developer for Unda, um, Copernicus Diaz um, at um, Circo Italia in space and Rome. But still, he's in love with Spain, as he says, and he has been in, um, two years living in Spain. We have got Wendy uh, from Soblo. Um, Wendy is part of the business development team of Soblo, um, the Copernicus DS platform led by Airbus, and she is particularly particularly active in promoting the use of uh, Earth observation um, for um, social benefits. Previously, um, she led the European data portal on behalf of the European Commission and promoted the use of open data in, in different areas such as public administration, business, and smart cities. Christoph is um, part of the business development team of Sublu. He was previously in the project team for the implementation of the Sublu platform itself, and he has uh, past experience both in project management and um, business development in, in the domain of um, earth observation ground segments and, in particular, uh, image ground segments. So. A little bit about Knowledge Innovation Market. Knowledge Innovation Market is a technology transfer um, company which was founded in 2007 by the Chamber of Commerce of Barcelona and um, uh, and later at um, uh, Technology Center. Um, right now we are based in Barcelona, uh, in Madrid. Uh, we have got offices in Madrid and Vigo. Um, we also have office in, in office in Chile, uh, Santiago de Chile. So I will give the ground to Mario, and um, he will try to explain um, how the DS platform works. Um, Mario? OK, thank you, Loa, for the introduction. Can you hear me properly? Hello? Yep. OK, perfect. So thank you again, and uh, um, good afternoon to everyone. So. I'm Mario, I work for Serco, I'm a business manager for uh, Honda, uh, Diaz. And uh, yes, I've been living, in, I'm, I'm still in love with Spain because I've been living in Spain for two years in, uh, in Madrid. Entonces, si queréis, podemos hablar también en español, o mejor, las preguntas luego también en español sin problema. 
Uh, if not, I mean, we can speak in English, uh, so it's up to you. Uh, so I think that is uh, probably uh, worth mentioning uh, um, two words about uh, the Copernicus uh, program. So as you know, Copernicus is the uh, European Union's uh, Earth Observation Program. Uh, that offers information services that are based on uh, satellite and uh, in situ data. So this um, this program is coordinated and managed by the European Commission uh, in partnership with uh, the European Space Agency, uh, the member states, uh, and other agencies like uh, UMESAT, uh, ECMWF, uh, Mercator Ocean, and European agencies. Uh, so, uh, as you can imagine, as you probably know, uh, uh, this um, health observation data and uh, geospatial information that uh, are generated or collected from uh, space or from uh, in situ sensors uh, is an enormous, an enormous amount of data uh, that is creating, of course, great opportunities. Uh, but also challenges. So this is why the European Commission decided to uh, trigger the DS initiative um, with the main goal to uh, let the users concentrate less on infrastructures and more on uh, the analysis and the information that are the core of, uh, of their businesses and, uh, and knowledge. Uh, and uh, ONDA is the Cerco Diaz uh, solution to uh, this uh, European Commission uh, initiative. So just to, to give you this uh, uh, very quick uh, overview. Uh, I also think it, is, uh, um, it can be uh, useful to show you a very quick video about the uh, Copernicus program. So let's see, okay, if it works. If it doesn't work, maybe we can search it if you want. Okay, it just uh, called what is the Copernicus program in uh, YouTube. It's a very quick video, a couple of minutes, but I think it's uh, important to, to let you understand the how important is this, uh, this program. And the best way to do it in this uh, short time is to, I think, to show you this uh, video. This one? Yes. Thank you. I don't know if everyone can listen. I cannot. Yes, it's okay here. Yeah, you can listen to the voice. Oh, no, not not to the voice, no.
Okay, perfect. So I I couldn't listen the audio. I hope you did. Anyway, fortunately we had the. Or at least that they have read the subtitles. <laughs> yeah, totally. <Hopefully. laughs> fortunately, we had the subtitles. Anyway, so uh, the point is that uh, this uh, great uh, program has six uh, thematic services, is offering six thematic services, and these uh, services are uh, based on, uh, um, I mean, take the, the data from several sensors, uh, several uh, um, uh, satellites, but also in situ sensors. And regarding the satellites, uh, they are taking this um, this information, this data from the Sentinel's emissions, uh, but also uh, from other uh, satellites coming from uh, what uh, they call uh, uh, contributing missions. So I don't know if you can come back to the presentation. Loa. Okay, perfect. Yeah, sorry, the video was going on and I was not no, sure no. <laughs> because I had not no like worry. this stuff. <laughs> so should I use the keyboard? Okay, to go ahead. Uh, I think there is a problem with the format. Okay, no, no problem, I will go ahead. Uh, so, I mean, this is an enormous amount of data. So this is why European Commission decided to, to start with this uh, initiative. Uh, called DIAS, so Data and Inf in Information Access uh, Services. So it's uh, funded by the European Commission under the aegis of the European Space Agency. And the, the purpose of this uh, is to, uh, to facilitate the access and the exploitation of the data. So the uh, the aim, the, the goal is to uh, avoid storage and cloud resource problems uh, for the users that want to access this data and exploit this data, transform this data into information. And ONDA is the Serco Diaz solution. So uh, ONDA is basically two things. It's a one-stop place uh, for you to access and host geospatial data and also a cloud-based platform to exploit it and build your applications. And we are supporting uh, users at various levels of expertise, uh, uh, which are exploiting the data uh, for diverse purposes. So this is the uh, Onda Consortium led by Serco Italia. Uh, OVH is our cloud provider. Uh, GAL Systems uh, developed uh, an advanced uh, data access technology that is called Elastic Node uh, Servers and uh, Synergize provides the VIEW service, just to give an um, overview of the consortium. So uh, I would like to start with the key benefits of, uh, of Honda. Uh, these are um, benefits, comments that uh, come from our users, uh, either from our survey campaigns or from direct uh, engagements. So the platform is open, so open free access to all geospatial data and information that I'm going to show you. And uh, we, uh, it, it is also open designed in a way to avoid the locking vendor solutions. So we guarantee the uh, portability of applications built on Onda uh, and vice versa, there have been also applications uh, that migrated from other systems into Onda uh, with very low uh, um, level of effort. It's simple. So you will see also, if I um, can show you the website uh, at the end of the slides, uh, simple. So just few clicks to access the data and services and to predict costs. It's flexible in terms of solutions, but you will see also in terms of uh, um, payment methods. So we have a pay per use uh, 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 billing. Uh, we have a monthly uh, subscription plan uh, or we have dedicated billings so, or uh, I don't know if you, a user want to pay every three months, I don't know, four months, dedicated billing and also discounts for long-term agreements. Is reliable, so uh, this is one of the main, I think, uh, uh, advantage of Honda. So uh, it is already 
proved in large processing scenarios. And uh, in this uh, presentation, I'm going to show you some uh, examples, some use cases uh, that are uh, large processing scenarios that are running on uh, on Honda. One of them, the, the, the most recent one, is the Sentinel-3 uh, World Fires Atlas prototype. Uh, that uh, developed by the European Space Agency uh, that was published a couple of days ago, so very, very recently. It's secure, so compliant with the international standards and uh, regulations, and it's fast to market uh, thanks to our uh, comp competitive prices. So uh, uh, you can also double check it. If you go to the um, website of our cloud provider, uh, basically we um, reflect the same prices of our cloud provider. But the difference is that for the same price um, uh, provided uh, by our cloud provider, uh, we offer to the users access to the data and also additional services to, to exploit it. So these are some numbers to just uh, give you an idea what we are talking about. This is a huge archive. So um, in less than one year of operation, uh, we reached more than 15 millions of products for a total of about 16 petabytes of, uh, of data. It's huge. So we have uh, more than uh, 600 registered users, and this month we have more than uh, 155 uh, active virtual machines. Uh, this is a public dashboard you can access from uh, on the website. So we are bringing people on data um, through one of the largest archive ever built for geospatial information. So our current offer consists of uh, the Copernicus Sentinel missions, so Sentinel-1, Sentinel-2, Sentinel-3, uh, and the Sentinel-5P will be um, ingested in the uh, coming weeks. We're talking about one, two weeks, and uh, we are talking about all products. Uh, we have also we also include Envisat, Landsat 8, and the Copernicus core services that you saw in the in the video. And more data is is about to come. So we um, systematically publish the uh, all the details in our website or in our newsletters. So we, I invite you to to subscribe to it. And this is online data. It means that it's immediately available. Uh, to our users, so you do not need to download it. It's available once you access uh, uh, our virtual machines. Uh, the data is already there. You can start working on it. Um, so once the data is this data is published in the corresponding hubs. So for you, it's, it's easy in a c easy access because instead of going uh, to each hub to download uh, a specific product, you have all these products in one place. And uh, uh, the data uh, we are committed to uh, make the data available into Onda uh, without other delay than the transfer time. So free and open access to the data and information. A full availability of the old Copernicus data. And we are talking about a complete archive uh, starting from June 2016, but we have also started ingesting the data before June 2016. So we are also building the long term archive. And this is a growing archive. So uh, we, do not, we do not put data offline, we keep on ingesting data without removing the previous one. And we are talking about online data. Is the system is data agnostic, so uh, the users can ingest any data type that they want. We are also going to include the in situ data. Uh, there is a list in the on the website. And if you have your own data, you want to. Um, store uh, your own data within uh, Onda, uh, you can do it. Uh, we offer also third-party data hosting service. So it's an end-to-end -end, uh, service from the uh, migration to the dissemination of the data with privilege, data access privileges and rights that you decide. Together with the data, we offer cloud uh, co-located cloud resources. So we have tailored virtual servers for any scenarios from an entry-level machine uh, to high-performance uh, um, 
infrastructures so you can go to the to our website and you can choose the model that best fits your needs and with a few steps uh, you can uh, create and start working on your environment so without the need to engage with our teams uh, you will be able to upgrade or scale down at any time to install any tool that you want. We also have a pre-configured template with some uh, tools already installed. Uh, there is a non-exhaustive list in the um, website. Uh, and again, you will have direct access to the data, so no download needed. Guaranteed security, uh, performance and uh, flexible uh, solutions, but especially payment methods. So uh, we uh, want uh, our solution to be useful for the entire earth observation value chain. So from uh, the upstream to the downstream, from the data providers to the end users. So this is why we offer three working environments. Uh, one is the uh, command line, the standard way to access the infrastructure for more advanced users. We also provide a remote desktop in order to facilitate the access uh, and the exploitation of the data. And we also offer uh, um, web applications um, that are uh, tool, tools for our intermediate users uh, to showcase or maybe to deliver a service or a solution to their end users. So as I said, the uh, systems, the solution is designed in a way that uh, enables our users to uh, choose, create and start working on their virtual machines without the need to engage with, uh, with us, with our teams. However, we always put uh, the, um, our technical expertise at the disposal of, of the users uh, through a first uh, line of support including service, a service desk, uh, online documentation, a newsletter and web content, so for free. And as an option, if you need a higher um, level of support, uh, we have also professional services. So our cloud architects uh, can um, help you uh, creating, migrating, operating, managing, your system. Uh, we can also uh, put in place any uh, service level agreement that you need, uh, even for uh, already mature services. And uh, as I said, we also have a data hosting uh, service to store your, your own data. Another very interesting thing that Onda offers is the marketplace. So the marketplace is for our users, a showroom in the EO community. So um, because our goal is to foster the market and um, also trigger relationships between our, our users. And so of course, this is both a promotional area for our users, but also a, a market for the EO community uh, to find uh, access or maybe subscribe for a, for a service. So it is for our users a great opportunity uh, to have a, a showroom, uh, a very interesting showroom in the EO community. And we, we invite you to visit it because we always update it with new, with new solutions and applications. So, um, these are some uh, users and uh, um, projects running on uh, Onda. Um, so uh, I would like to highlight the heterogeneity of our users. So we are supporting users at various levels of expertise. So we are supporting individuals, professionals, students, uh, universities, research, research, research centers, startups, uh, uh, small and medium enterprises, large enterprises. So we are supporting uh, users at various levels of expertise, uh, regardless the thematic application or businesses they are dealing with. And the coming uh, um, the next slides, I have 
gathered some examples, some use cases uh, of uh, projects and applications that are uh, running on Honda and some of them are also uh, used of course for uh, smart cities uh, uh, implementations. For example, uh, this, this is a geo-hazard monitoring service uh, provided by uh, ENGV um, within the geo-hazard uh, um, tab. So uh, the, the purpose is to, um, they use Sentinel-2 and Landsat-8 to visualize and track uh, disaster events. For example, this is a mountain Etna a lava flow in uh, mountain Etna in Sicily, in Italy. Uh, and they calculate uh, qualitative and quantitative indicators. Or, uh, for example, um, there is also this Earth Surface Monitoring System uh, developed uh, by uh, CNR uh, IREA, that is the Institute for Electromagnetic Sensing of Environment. So they are creating, um, for example, this is an example of a large scale processing. So on a European scale, uh, but they also want to uh, expand the extent. Uh, so they calculate this ground deformation velocity maps uh, so they calculate the the deformation velocity of uh, of the ground, and they use uh, the Sentinel One data, and the technique is called the uh, differential uh, synthetic aperture radar interferometry. And on the right, you can see two examples: one in Italy, and the other one in uh, in Germany. So then there is this near real-time support to civil protection operations uh, ran by Acrotech uh, within the International Center for Environmental Monitoring. So they are using ONDA to uh, create, to, to run post-event flooded areas detection, a soil moisture analysis for hydrological forecast models and the fire susceptibility forecast models. Uh, and they support the civil protection over they are supporting the civil protection operations so the, we are not talking about these are not examples these are um, services solutions that uh, are uh, in operation and that support end users and this is the uh, Sentinel-3 World Fires Atlas prototype that I mentioned, developed by the European Space Agency. So it's a systematic process of uh, all uh, the acquired Sentinel-3A, uh, Sentinel-3B data from April 2019 onward. Uh, so they are using uh, uh, the Sentinel, um, the dedicated channels F1 and F2 uh, of, the, of the sensor of the Sentinel 3AB for fire and high temperature events. So I will try to click on the link. Let's see if it works. I just want to show you this uh, very powerful and interesting application. Okay, it's working. So of course you can uh, here um, read more information. So as you can see, uh, you can visualize all the uh, fires uh, around Europe. The first area of interest is, uh, let's say, this this area, Europe, over Europe. Uh, for example, these are the uh, fires uh, occurred today. Or for example, you can see. Uh, the fires from uh, yesterday. I don't know if it changed. Or maybe two days ago I saw that there uh, were, I guess it's changing, but it's, I see it very small. Let's see if I can uh, zoom, okay. So for example, uh, two days ago, uh, there were two fires in Spain. You can also change the base map. So we are
Yes, yeah, so in the south of Spain there were two fires. I don't know if you can confirm it, but uh, yes, so they are using this is running on Onda and they are using uh, uh, the data and the cloud resources to to create this very powerful application. So let's see if I manage to come back to the presentation. Okay. So this is an example of a commercial uh, service. So uh, these guys from Urbiet Orbit uh, are uh, offering a land access monitoring and property protection service uh, using machine learning and artificial intelligence. So they run change automated uh, change detection analysis. Uh, they calculate uh, analytical insights and uh, they also provide remote lending systems. So uh, this is a good example because um, it, this is an example of how Honda is giving a chance to several uh, solutions and services to come alive and become operational because they are offering this service for a very low price and this is because they are relying on an infrastructure and cloud resources and data that has a very low price so i invite you also to um, to explore our competitive prices in the in the website um, this is another example of evaluation of climate change effects um, ran by Earth Start Beating. So this is a monthly biophysical uh, indicators from Sentinel-3 and they are tracking, uh, measuring and uh, visualizing changes. Uh, and this is a, another example of a, uh, an analysis, a large processing uh, uh, scenario. So among the, the several initiatives, um, of course, it's worth mentioning the free trial access program. So we want to raise the uh, confidence on uh, Onda and the best way to do it is to let you try it. So this is why we uh, have this um, free trial access program. So we give free access to our retail machines for you to, to test or to maybe migrate your, uh, your application into Onda. And um, we are also very uh, happy, Onda is very happy to support, um, to, to be part of the um, prizes for the winner of your hackathon. So the winner will get, uh, a uh, free trial access uh, for three months so the winner will be able to to try for free our built on machines and also to receive uh, support from the uh, dedicated service desk another very interesting uh, initiative is the onda for education so the this is a commercial uh, uh, offer for uh, um, uh, thematic uh, um, application based on earth observation data uh, through public webinars uh, but also through dedicated webinars for specific needs so this is intended for universities uh, secondary education but also for everyone uh, who who may need it so these are some conferences where you will find Onda, so of course the Living Planet Symposium in uh, Milan, the Free Week, UK Space Conference, etc. And uh, of course uh, we are, uh, as I said, very happy to support many initiatives, including your, uh, your hackathon, uh, by giving uh, um, access to um, free access to our virtual machines and also our support line. And these are some active evolution lines. Uh, so uh, we always extend our own the portfolio. Uh, we are uh, building the long-term archive, as I said. The, the archive is already uh, huge, but we are also building the long-term archive. We are going to include in situ data, and we are also um, in contact with um, uh, commercial uh, data providers uh, um, to include more sensors into the offer. Uh, we will have also a planned acquisition view tool for you to um, to predict the uh, acquisition, the new acquisitions of the sensors that are included in the offer. 
uh, the Onda for Education uh, the service that I have already uh, mentioned. We are going to publish uh, more details in the coming weeks and uh, we always uh, reflect the cloud innovations coming from uh, um, our cloud provider immediately into Onda and there is also the uh, possibility for you to access these on the GIS web apps if you want to showcase or if you want to deliver a, a specific product or a service to, to your end users. So these are our contacts. Um, so this is the on the website. You can also subscribe to our newsletter. You can follow us on the uh, social media. And uh, again, of course, uh, if you have any question, uh, you can ask uh, them now or please feel free to contact us or to contact me if you want to tell us uh, your your requirements and also to find out uh, how Onda can, can help you. Now, I don't have really a demo but maybe I can, uh, uh, we can explore together our website because I just would like to show you how easy it is to uh, create uh, uh, a virtual machine by your own, so without the need to engage with, uh, with our teams. So this is the on the website, so um, it's quite, uh, in my opinion, user-friendly. User so in the data tab, um, you can see all the data that is available and also you can get more information about the upcoming data. There is the services tab where you can access our, uh, um, for, for example, uh, see yeah, the, the cloud resources, uh, the professional services that we have, the tools that you can install, the, the, the pre-configured pre uh, templates with, the, with some tools already installed, but again, you can install any tool, uh, any tool that you want or we can do it for you. And you can also access the, um, our uh, discovery catalog. So there is a catalog uh, where you can see all the available data. And the marketplace, this is the place for our users to uh, publish their uh, services uh, if they want, of course. And uh, um, there is the news uh, session section where, you, where we publish all the all the last uh, um, details and here in the help tab there is a frequently asked questions uh, where you will find uh, more information about uh, Onda. There are also user guides that explain you uh, for example the API that we use to to access the data. So uh, we access, we, we, we offer uh, uh, mainly two API, APIs to access the data. One is OData and the other one, as you can see the user guide here, and the other one uh, is the uh, Elastic Node service uh, that was developed by uh, Gal Systems, that is part of the Onda consortium. So oh, the Elastic Node service, I'm not that expert, but the this Elastic Node service uh, is uh, um, data access, advanced data access technology that enables users to access a low uh, component of a product uh, regardless the um, structure or the format of, of the data. So for example if you want to download uh, or to access a specific uh, band of a product instead of accessing the entire product or downloading the entire product uh, you can access or download just uh, the band that you need. So you save time and you save storage. So this is the concept, but here you have a user guide. Um, and again, if you don't find the information that you need there, you can also contact us here. So last thing, thing I would like to show you is um, how to create a virtual machine. So uh, of course the, the first step is to uh, register our um, uh, to get registered, let's see if it okay. So you will click here on register. So now I just log in.
So once we are here, once once we are registered, you can access your uh, um, personal area, and uh, again here you can find the user guides that I showed you, and here there are additional tutorials for uh, this uh, personal uh, area. But I mean, it's uh, my opinion quite uh, user friendly. So. Um, the, the first step, of course, is to create a, a wallet. And once you create your uh, personal wallet, you will be able to access all the this uh, virtual uh, infrastructure um, portal. And here you can see all the options that we have uh, for general purposes, for computing intensive, or for uh, memory intensive applications. And you will uh, read here all the characteristics of the virtual machines. And uh, uh, as you can see, you can choose uh, between a, a hourly uh, cost, um, if you want to pay per hour, pay per use, or a, a monthly cost if you want to pay for the entire uh, month. Uh, if you want to get an even even uh, uh, better price, and uh, um, yes, so w once you define the the virtual machine that best fits your your need, you can see here that you have uh, two uh, wizard wizards to create your virtual machine: a fast wizard and advanced wizard. But in both cases, with very few steps, you will be able to. Um, to create your your virtual machine without again the need to engage with our team, but we are always at your disposal if you need any any kind of support. So let's say, for example, that I have uh, found my um, virtual machine. So um, as you will see, um, in very few steps you you can create it. So you just type on a, a name here and. Uh, here again you you decide if you want to pay per hour or uh, per month but if you need dedicated billing uh, we are happy to do it or if you in the future you will uh, you want to um, uh, a long agreement with us so of course we will uh, give us so uh, dedicated discounts um, and here you will see all the um, operating systems that we have so you pick the one that you that you need. You can also add persistent storages to your machine, and of course you can also decide to not delete your storage at the instance deletion. So in this way you will save your your storage if you decide if you ever decide to delete your machine and uh, and that's it this is a summary and uh, you click create and once you click create we send you the um, the id of the machine the ssh key uh, with these two informations uh, uh, you will be able to access the the virtual machine and uh, or if you if you I mean, I, of course, I suppose you are a technical expert, so maybe the command line is the best way for you to access uh, the virtual machine. If it's not, uh, we can also give you the access through a remote desktop with the uh, tools installed, uh, open source tools tools installed that you need. And, uh, and again, you can find the non-exhaustive list in the, in the website. So, Yes, I think that that's it. So um, I hope the, the presentation was clear uh, enough. And it was not that technical because I'm not a technical expert. I deal more on the uh, commercial uh, side. And today, uh, I mean, I had to, to have the, the the webinar with uh, with my colleague, but the problem is that today the office is closed actually, so it was a problem for me to find uh, a cloud architect uh, to to join this this webinar. Uh, but if you have uh, specific technical questions, uh, I will uh, make sure to pass them to to our technical team and to come back to you. So thank please you so me much, Mario. English. We have got some questions. Um, I will try to pass. Them right now to you. Um, someone is asking if um, we are planning to include the data from the Copernicus Climate 
data stored the platform from Copernicus is terribly slow and download file format is difficult to manage. Um, so, sorry, yeah, actually, I didn't get the question. Yeah, actually, they're asking, it's from for organizers, they're asking if we are going to give them the data. So that's why, I mean, um, we wanted you to be in today's webinar because you have to access the data through Onda's platform or Sublo's platform. We are not going to give you the data directly um, through um, other sources. Um, and exactly. then, so once you access, yeah, just to, to make it clear. Yeah. So once you access, once you create the virtual machine, once you access it, the data is already there. So you do not have to do anything. So the data is there, you can access all the data that, that you want. It's there, it's online, you don't need to download it, and you can work on it. And Anna is asking if during the hackathon they can access through Linux uh, platform without any problem. Yes, definitely. I don't know if you managed to see all the um, Oper uh, the the systems that that we have, um, and uh, they are based also on on uh, Linux. So yes, no no problem. Yeah, because uh, she's saying it was a little bit difficult to connect to the webinar from Linux. Um, yeah, webinar is another thing. Um, they have their own platform and website. Uh, so if he's saying, um, then probably it should be fine. Uh, but try beforehand, and if you get uh, any problem, let us know. And you have Mario's contact, so let him uh, let him know um, uh, what kind of uh, problems. Um, yeah, facing. the system is based on uh, Linux, so I don't think that uh, will be any any problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and Carlos is asking, um, so he's saying that, as you mentioned, into uh, data will be integrated in UNDA in, in the future. Could you elaborate on what kind of data? So, uh, we are going to include the data that now is missing from the Copernicus program. It means mm -hmm. that uh, Sentinel-5P and uh, the Copernicus uh, Emergency uh, Management Service so these are the two pieces that are uh, missing from the Copernicus program. But as you can see from the upcoming data tab of the website that I showed you, uh, there is a roadmap uh, with the date when we are going or the period when we are going to uh, ingest the data. And we are talking about weeks. So this regarding the Copernicus side. In the same time, at the same time, we are going to uh, ingest also in situ data. There is again a list in the website of the in situ data we are going to ingest, and we are also uh, there are ongoing discussions with the commercial data providers in order to give users also access to uh, higher uh, um, resolution uh, or better resolution uh, sensors than uh, uh, the Sentinels. Uh, so this is uh, the uh, the overview of the data that uh, will be available. But now again, uh, just I would like to highlight the fact that we already have uh, 16 petabytes of data uh, from the website. You can see all the data that is available. Also, you can use the, the discovery catalog and uh, you can play with it to see the data that is, uh, is already available. And actually, if, uh, if you also want to download it, uh, you don't need a, a virtual machine, so you can just uh, register in the on the website, and uh, from the catalog you can download the, all the data that you want. But of course, uh, if you need to exploit that data to, to transform that data into information, you need also cloud resources that are co-located with the data. That's why we provide the DS. The concept of the DS is uh, also to provide. Uh, uh, cloud resources. Um, there's another question um, from one of the part participants. Uh, she's asking if uh, we can um, actually build applications in, in UNDA using um, other data that are not Copernicus data, for example, data from public sources um, that can be reached uh, via um, APIs, which are pri privately owned. Yeah, definitely. 
I mean, you can access the the data from all. I mean, the the, the system is we, we we guarantee the interoperability. So our standards are open. So you definitely can access all the the data sources that you want. Or again, if you want your data locally, uh, with very uh, competitive prices that you uh, you can uh, see from the website uh, you can add more storage if you need it we already give the storage together with the virtual machine but if for some reason you need from storage for very very competitive prices you can add storage and you can store all the data that you want so we are talking about for the just to give you some prices so for the um, uh, an entry level virtual machine for example uh, you would pay six uh, cents per hour and for additional uh, uh, storage you would pay four cents per gigabytes per month so we, we are talking about 40 euros uh, per month for one tera of, of data so very accessible uh, very affordable prices and in the commercial uh, application i showed to you uh, I, I i highlighted this point that those guys those guys are very small startup and they are their services is becoming alive and operational because they are based on an infrastructure that is first reliable second is cheap so they are uh, serving they are offering a service for a very low price very competitive price because they of course compete with uh, uh, <clears throat> sorry with big uh, players that already maybe do their service so the the best way to compete is also uh, providing uh, uh, better prices yeah i completely agree so um there was another question um Gustavo is actually asking if you, um, in future, if you are planning to provide um, any other private constellation data, um, such as planet or digital globe data. So, um, first, I will answer with the first comment. So, we are building our strategy and our next steps on top of the uh, users' needs and uh, and requirements so thank you it was gustavo i think thank you gustavo and all the uh, attendees that are sharing their needs because we are building our strategy on top of them uh, say everything that uh, regarding the commercial uh, uh, data providers it depends on their businesses of course uh, this is data that they sell so uh, the best way uh, maybe that Onda can do is to uh, facilitate uh, the access to this data to the end users um, through uh, maybe uh, lower prices. So, but this this there are ongoing discussions. Uh, we do want to include more data. And we are discussing all the uh, commercial details with those data providers. So this is not up to Wanda. This is up to the data provider that own uh, the the data. Yeah, we are going to take the last question because we have okay. to start with Sublu. Um, and then if you have got any other questions, please feel free to write them. Um, if we will not have enough time, we will try to reach you out by email. So the last question is, is um, um, is it possible to test the virtual machine for free? Yes, we have this uh, free trial access program. Uh, I invite you to contact us because we have a, a budget for, for it. So it depends on the, the application and also um, if the specific user or users uh, want to start uh, maybe a long-term relationship. So in that case, uh, we of course uh, if the the idea is uh, very interesting and if there is the interest of the users to start a long term relationships yes of course this is this will be included in our uh, uh, free trial access program great uh, thank you so much um mario again um so we will um 
we will start with the Soblo's presentation. Um, as I mentioned, so um, this part of the webinar will be presented by Vindy and Christoph from Soblo. Um, I will give the floor to both of you. Oh. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Loha. So I have the screen with the presentation. That's perfect. So thank you all for uh, attending the webinar this afternoon, and thank you very much, Loha, for having uh, invited us to to present Soplu. As uh, you know, we are. Um, contributing to the prize and we have been contributing also to raising awareness around the uh, the hackathon that will be taking place in in Barcelona in a couple of weeks so I'm not as fluent in Spanish as uh, everybody else so I will uh, do the presentation in uh, in English if I may uh, so so blue is uh, led by Airbus defense and space and it's based on a consortium with uh, Capgemini and Orange as our cloud provider we also have domestic partners such as Vito and uh, NCLS and uh, our philosophy is to make accessing data the easy part and to provide what we call creative ground which is the uh, soil that will be used to make use of the data and make it valuable in the context of applications and innovation uh, that it will be developed so by you in the context of the hackathon but also in a broader context where everybody is trying to leverage uh, data from space to develop new applications for societal needs or in the context of this presentation we'll have a bit of a dive deep on uh, on smart cities so uh to the next slide or if you can give me the control so i can click through the slides loha yeah the boxes it seems right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll go through the introduction, uh, what it is that Soblu has to offer, a focus on smart cities, and then uh, to conclude the essentials for the hackathon and the prize, followed by uh, some question and answers. So the idea of Soblu, it's really to have in mind this idea of a one-stop shop to develop, run, and share, and market your services, which means it's access to data, it's access to cloud infrastructure, it's also access to the developer's environment and it's access to what we call a showroom or a marketplace, which will help you promote what you have developed and connect with others who might have needs in the field that you have been addressing or who might be interested in making uh, use or connecting your solution to a broader set of solutions. It's really about having you focus on what you do best. So there is no need to worry about uh, accessing virtual machines or accessing a uh, developer's environment. It's you have your idea and you just run uh, run with your creativity and, uh, and your developer's ideas. In terms of data access, and maybe to um, pick up on the question that was raised previously to, uh, to, the, to the former speaker, uh, we offer access to Copernicus Sentinel data uh, like, uh, like everybody else. What we equally offer access to is um, commercial data from Spot 6, Spot 7, and Playad, high, high resolution. And in the near future, we already do this on demand, but in the near future, we will also give access to uh, what we call geomarketing data. So that's anonymized um, mobile phone data. Processing on demand, that's the entire environment that is, I would say, the power base to, to develop and to process uh, big data from space. Tailored solutions, because we believe that all users are unique and have uh, unique needs. Not, uh, not any of our current users use Soblu in the same way and for the same purpose. And in addition to that, we offer a full suite of what we have called professional services. And these professional services range all the way from uh, support to use of data to support um, you in developing a business case or a business model, support also on marketing aspects or a very specific hands-on cloud expertise that you would need in the context, but that's perhaps more applicable to, to, uh, to specific user segments who would like to migrate sophisticated, sophisticated applications to the cloud. There's this Earth Observation Toolbox, of course, because if we want to have everything tailored for you, it also means that we are considering the specificities of, uh, of working with space data and backend services. So backend services are, I would say, bridging the gap 
between the different uh, developers environment, between the compute, between the earth observation toolbox, and all that contributes to the infrastructure that we provide to support what we have called, as I said, creative grounds, because again, data access should be the easy part, and it's about unleashing innovation and uh, and helping ideas, uh, ideas emerge all in a secure cloud. Um, there, going to the next one. There we go. Uh, in terms of facts and figures, uh, mid-April, that's roughly uh, roughly 17 million Sentinel products. So it's Sentinel-1, Sentinel-2, Sentinel-3, Sentinel-5 data, as well as uh, Copernicus core services. So we have all of them, so marine, land, emergency, and atmosphere. The only one that we're missing is the climate data store, which we will be having um, in June of, of this year. Uh, in, the, in terms of local storage, we are talking about roughly nine petabytes of, uh, of products in, uh, in local storage. And to give you an idea of um, the number of active users that we have, we have 462 active users, and that's roughly plus 10% since the beginning of the month, uh, which means that there are more and more people who are taking advantage of, uh, of the platform. Um, we have, as was mentioned by the previous speaker, also an early adopter program which offers um, preferential conditions to receive support, to have free access to cloud resources, and to get engaged in, I would say, a sort of mini incubation uh, environment whereby uh, we help you make the most of, of your ideas. Uh, we're also very active in the European ecosystem of Copernicus. So if you're interested, we are also sponsoring uh, the Copernicus Masters. So any of you can also apply uh, to uh, to get into the Copernicus challenge, we have a specific challenge called the Airbus SoBlue uh, multi-source data challenge, and uh, the prize is pretty huge. Uh, and I don't want to say anything silly, but it's roughly a hundred thousand euro prize, if I remember on the, on the top of my head. So that's what we do in the Copernicus ecosystem environment. We're also involved with the European Commission, with the European Space Agency, with the European Association for Remote Sensing, present in numerous events. Um, and it's not just Europe, it's also a context that we have in Australia, Japan. Uh, we were having a discussion earlier about supporting activities in Africa and, um, and such like. Uh, for the hackathon, so uh, we have provided a number of virtual machines in the past. Uh, we are going to continue doing that uh, in the context of some upcoming activities. Uh, for this hackathon in particular, to manage expectations, uh, we are not offering any uh, virtual machine support. Uh, we prefer to offer more, I would say, uh, coaching in advance and support uh, during uh, the first day of the hackathon and um, then offer a more interesting prize, mainly because what we've noticed in our past experience is that during the hackathons, you guys don't necessarily need that much compute because what you want to do often runs on your own environments or directly on your own PCs. And honestly, hackathon time goes so fast that often enough you end up having 10 times more resources uh, to put your idea um, together. So um, moving on to the next one. So what if you could easily access data and start creating? And here I'm going to hand over to my, Christoph col uh, to my colleague Christoph who is uh, more technical than I am. I'm more from the business side of, uh, of the project. And he will walk you through uh, details about our data access, details about our technical infrastructure. And um, he'll also go through some of the specifics that you need to know to access the data through the API. So Christoph, uh, I'll be handing over to you. Okay, well, thank you, Wendy. Uh, well, uh, hi, everybody, hi again. Uh, maybe just a couple of uh, seconds, uh, Loha, if you don't mind, I'll take the uh, the uh, the role, uh, the presentation, uh, and uh, just let me know if you uh, if you can see my um, my screen. Um, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, I mean, if you want, I can give you access to the mouse and keyboard, so this way you can actually pass the slides. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Please. Can you see it now? Um. 
Can you see my screen now? No, actually, now they will see my screen. So uh, I will give you, uh, you have, you actually can uh, pass the slides. So you have uh, control over mouse and keyboard. Yeah. All right. Do you want okay. to try? Yeah. So you can just, uh, yeah, switch the slides. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to change it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, let me check. Yeah, it's it's okay. Okay, so as uh, as Wendy said, uh, we'll be going through the uh, let's say the detailed offering um, as summarized by uh, Wendy. Well, let's say uh, SoBlue is offering uh, YAS, that is cloud resources. We also propose uh, data and uh, most. Uh, uh, importantly, uh, the way to access to this data, toolboxes and services so that we, let's say, help you uh, settle your environment and uh, so you can start working uh, quickly. Uh, support, because sometimes it's necessary and it's helpful. Uh, let it be in, let's say, human support or uh, uh, support through uh, um, uh, uh, the website or the, uh, the GitLab that we propose. Also, we include, uh, also Blue includes uh, a marketplace and proposes uh, ex expert services. So we'll be running through these. Um, and uh, of course, if you have questions, well, uh, as, uh, as proposed by Loha, I would, uh, I would appreciate that you keep them, uh, you write them down and keep them for uh, just uh, the end of the presentation. Well, as far as the as resources are concerned, uh, so Blue. Uh, is using the uh, the orange uh, public cloud solution, which is called Flexible Engine. Uh, well, in, uh, in in short in short words, um, well, we're talking about, of course, uh, a public cloud, but which is secured, and which is uh, most uh, um, importantly uh, based on for uh, high availability and high performance. Uh, and of course, multi-certified as far as security is concerned. But then, uh, well, the, it is to be noted that the Soblu platform itself is based uh, in France. It's uh, spread over two data centers so that there is, uh, let's say, a redundancy and therefore reliability across them. But what is very important is that we, uh, uh, by teaming with Orange, we benefit, and, and when we say we, that is you also as a user, uh, can benefit from a worldwide um, uh, cloud solution. That is, if at some stage you want to start to, to get local with your, uh, with your services uh, on our cloud solution, then you can benefit from your, our installation in Amsterdam, which are still in Europe, but also in, uh, in Asia and in, uh, in the US. And now this is only to uh, talk about the, um, the the data centers which are directly owned by Orange. But keep in mind that there are uh, Orange do have um, uh, agreements with other uh, cloud providers, and the number, uh, the resulting number of data centers which are uh, accessible is up to 70, 70, which is absolutely huge. And uh, in particular, uh, they cover absolutely all the world, that is uh, uh, South America, Africa, and this, let's say far, uh, far Asia, and in particular, uh, China. Uh, so again, uh, let's say you can be at this stage of very local, but we are able to accompany you uh, throughout the, uh, the world if necessary. So this is the, let's say, the, uh, the broader picture. Now, if we go into more details, um, of course, where, well, the uh, cloud, when we talk about cloud resources, we talk about, we think about most of the time, the compute part, the storage part, well, the network part, because otherwise, well, it's difficult to build the system, but there are some more um, uh, in there included, and specifically, um, we propose, through Orange again, we propose a whole lot of uh, services. As you can see, uh, there are about, well, there are more than 50 services which are accessible. 
Of course, I'm not going to go, to, to go through each of them, but uh, in the next slide, I will be uh, pointing to some of them because, uh, first of all, we, we have users who have, first of all, experienced them, and they give us a very good feedback on, uh, on them. So that's worth uh, sharing about them. Um, next, yes. Um, well, to be uh, to be more, let's say, uh, concrete and practical. Uh, well, as we said, and of course, uh, as public uh, cloud uh, cloud uh, providers or cloud solutions, sorry, are concerned. Well, these uh, the 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 W solution is definitely scale scalable, redounded. As I, uh, as I said before, and you can also, if necessary, in your, for, for your own solution, uh, count on this uh, redundancy. Um, well, fully, fully secured and uh, it's fully self-service. Once uh, you have access to what we call your tenant, which is your workspace on the, uh, on the orange cloud, you are, let's say, king in your, in your kingdom. You can do whatever you need uh, to, uh, to, to, to start working and expand it. Um, well, a couple of things that, that are worth uh, mentioning, technically speaking, uh, we, or you can choose from more than 80 types of uh, VMs, which is definitely the largest uh, portfolio as far as VMs are concerned. Uh, so we propose, well, general computing uh, VMs, disk intensive ones, memory optimized, GPU accelerated, which are not uh, common uh, to every uh, cloud provider. And again, I am mentioning this because several uh, of our users do use this kind of, uh, of VMs and they are pretty happy with them. And also uh, high performance or, uh, well, high performance, which is, let's say, uh, a higher, the higher end of the general computing uh, family. Now, so we're, this is about VMs. Uh, well, as far as storage is concerned, well, it's, it can be local to, uh, to the VM. Uh, let it be in uh, SATA or uh, SSD, which is very, uh, very, very high uh, speed uh, uh, storage. And it can be central in the form of uh, S3 storage or also uh, what we call SFS. SFS is the, uh, the commercial name for, the, uh, for uh, um, let, let's say, a system that is able to expose uh, this storage as a POSIX file system, and which is very interesting because when you, well, not everybody uh, starts their activity uh, thinking about uh, the cloud or that is being cloud native. And there are many applications which are already running in, uh, on computers, let them be personal or not, and that are trying to move to the, uh, to the cloud. And well, one of the main, let's say, difficulties in doing so is that they need, they are used to uh, interfacing, let's say, a POSIX file system. And uh, when you move to the cloud, this is not native. And this, uh, this service is, let's say, bridges the gap between a legacy algorithm that uses POSIX file system and the cloud, which is not, let's say, POSIX uh, native uh, as such. So, uh, well, we, we are mentioning this service because there again, several of our users, uh, well, we're happy to find it and are happy to use it also. Um, of course, well, you can also choose your network, uh, the, the firewalling in, in particular to, let's say, to provide uh, security and so on, but also the load, the load balancing uh, to make sure that when, when you grow, uh, when your service grows, then you can, uh, or let, let me say when the number of users of your service grows, uh, then your system is growing with it and able to balance through uh, uh, the load uh, so that you can positively answer to, uh, to, your, uh, to your users. Uh, well, I mentioned uh, just previously that we were offering more than 50 uh, services. And uh, well, on, I have pointed here to uh, three of them which are there again, or maybe four, um, which are again uh, very much appreciated by our users. The first one being by large, by far, uh, the CCE, the Cloud Container Engine, uh, which is there again the commercial name for uh, the provisioning of a Kubernetes cluster. Um, well, 
Kubernetes, well, when, when somebody, uh, well, when we think about cloud, we are thinking very naturally about Docker applications. And, and then you need uh, a container engine to, uh, um, to, you need an orchestrator, sorry, to, to orchestrate all these applications. Well, we do provide uh, in, in, uh, in one click the possibility to, uh, to provision a, cluster, a Kubernetes cluster to take care of, let's say, not only the deployment of your applications, but also the management, the daily management, the upscaling, the downscaling, and so on. And all this is taken care of automatically. Uh, and this is, let's say, that would be the star uh, across the, uh, the services that we provide uh, as far as, uh, as resources are, are concerned. Some other services which are quite often used, uh, well, the MRS, there again, forget about the, uh, the, the, the commercial name, the interest. Uh, well, what does it do is that it helps you build uh, an Hadoop cluster. And uh, again, it, it comes back to us that it, it is very often a useful, uh, a useful service. Another one, which is RDS for the, uh, the management of relational database. Basically, you just provision a database and you forget about it because it's all managed for you. Uh, the last one being, uh, well, the MLS, Machine Learning Service. I guess uh, you know as much as I do what this can do. Um, but basically, uh, you, you subscribe to this uh, service and it's all there for you. You don't have to bother about building whatever you, uh, you need to, uh, to start with the, uh, the machine learning processing. So this is about, uh, well, that, that is the first step, let's say, or stage of the presentation about the, uh, the YAS. Now, um, I'll be moving to the, uh, the data. So, um, as uh, Wendy said, I, I won't spend too long here because Wendy already presented uh, this uh, in, uh, in, most of, uh, in most of it. Um, well, we, if you go to our uh, catalog, um, well, you will find all the uh, Sentinel data, that is 1, 2, 3, 5P, and all except climate. Uh, all the core services. Just for your information, you might think that security could be there, uh, but security was, uh, uh, well, we were informed by uh, uh, the European community and ESA that security is not, let's say, for the moment, um, um, planned to be uh, put on, on, uh, on uh, the DIAS in general. Uh, of course, because of because it is security, so it's a bit uh, let's say touchy to put this on uh, on a public cloud. So uh, this is as far as the catalog is concerned, and as far as local storage of the uh, of the corresponding data, uh, well, it, it is there. Basically, we have all the information from November 2016 for uh, the S2L1C data, which is the most used from what we can see. Um, and for all the others, we have at least uh, the past year. Uh, when I say at least, for some of them, we, go, we even go back to 16 months. Uh, but this is to give you a rough idea. As far as CCS are concerned, it's, it's really a different story because, uh, as you might know, uh, there are, let's say, thousands of different products. Uh, if I remember well, just only for Marine, there are something like 971 products. And not all of them have the same periodicity for their uh, uh, update, so it really depends from one to another. It can it can range from a couple of months to absolutely all the uh, the history. Now uh, the, the 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 next stage are the next uh, let's say two phrases are are important. You might ask yourself what happens uh, if the data is not there. Well, when it's not there. Uh, so blue and and if you need it, of course, uh, so blue will fetch it automatically for for, uh, for you uh, from its data source. Uh, that is, let's say, on a unitary uh, level. Well, when I say unitary, it can be ten or twenty. But if you need to go to to have, let's say, a larger uh, bunch of data, let's say one thousand, I doubt that you will be patient enough to do it. So we offer uh, what we call the data warming service so that you can, let's say, specify to us uh, the, uh, the kind of data 
uh, you need, over which uh, duration, over which region, and so on, so that we can download it for you. And uh, well, we have just done it uh, no later than yesterday for a customer. And well, it takes, well, of course, depending on the quantity, it can take a couple of hours or maybe up to one or two days, but uh, no, no more than this. So uh, all the above was dedicated, let's say, to Sentinel or Copernicus data. We also uh, provide other kind of data. Um, well, what we call Muscat products, uh, which are available through the, uh, the marketplace. Uh, these provide a Sentinel to L2A and above all L3A products uh, from our partner. Uh, and well, I can I, I would let I will not go into more details. You can discover this through uh, through our website on the uh, under the uh, the marketplace. And now, as for the upcoming uh, data, which is well, that is the uh, short term upcoming. Uh, of course, we will bring the uh, the climate data into the game, um, but let's say the more exciting part uh, is related to the high resolution and very high resolution commercial data from Spot67 and Playad, and these these are due, let's say, end of May or early June, uh, and uh, definitely uh, this will be. Uh, let's say, a very good complement to uh, the, uh, the Sentinel data, which is, let's say, medium resolution. So we will cover all the, uh, the um, uh, let's say, the, um, the window of the resolutions that is uh, from uh, medium to uh, high and very high. And we do believe that this will be very interesting to our, uh, to our users. And of course, uh, well, they, they are already, <laughs> they have asked us to do so. Well. Uh, we were doing so anyway, but there is a lot of uh, expectations on this side. And uh, well, there are there are more coming, but well, we have not written down them down here. But there will be some of the coming by the end of the year. One of them, for example, is uh, Terrasar Terrasar X, uh, which is the uh, the radar part uh, of the uh, of the very high resolution commercial data. And and there will be more. So now this is the data. Uh, now, uh, how to access it? Well, we provide two ways of accessing it. Well, of course, well, of course, generally speaking, everybody uh, provides, uh, let's say, a web UI, a catalog through which you can go uh, uh, select and uh, and browse your uh, the, the the data to uh, evaluate what you uh, what you can do uh, with them. So we do offer this with the uh, well. I have uh, I have uh, written up there the uh, the uh, URL under which you can uh, you can access it. So this is for discovery. You get a quick look, quick look, but you are also able to download uh, data from there, and you can also get uh, uh, a full resolution viewing for a selected set of uh, of data. Very quickly, because I think this you might probably use it uh, during the hackathon. Uh, the right, uh, no, sorry, the left-hand side panel is dedicated to defining, uh, let's say, your search criteria. So you can uh, define your uh, area of interest. You can define the uh, collection that you want to work with, uh, the type of data, the level of data. You can also specify for Sentinel-2, for example, the, uh, the cloud cover notation that you would like to, uh, to, to, to select. Um, and also, as far as uh, cri uh, search criteria are concerned, the bottom part, uh, you can, at the bottom part there, uh, you can specify the, f the time window during which you, are, you, you, you want to find your data. Uh, and then once you have uh, done this, in fact, it, it's, it's in real time, the, the, the right part, the right panel is updated with all the data that, that are corresponding to your uh, search criteria. And then we'll see how you can uh, you can download data from there, uh, but this will be a bit uh, a bit later. So that's the let's say the uh, man machine interface to access data, and of course we also propose uh, a machine to machine uh, a way to access data. I'm not sure you will be using it during the hackathon because, as Wendy said, uh, time is quite short, and in general we have seen that. 
people concentrate, let's say, on the idea, on the concept, rather than on the coding. But it might be possible that uh, you are at the stage of coding, so uh, uh, we uh, we provide uh, all the information here. So basically, we have all the OGC APIs uh, for discovery, for viewing, for download, and also for streaming. Um, just one thing, uh, as far as viewing is concerned, um, as far as Sentinel-3 and 5P are concerned, uh, this is upcoming, so this is not, it means it's not available uh, already. Don't spend, uh, don't waste your time on that one. Uh, but it will be coming again uh, somewhere end of May, uh, early June. Uh, just uh, maybe uh, a quick comeback to uh, the, uh, the view part. Uh, let, uh, uh, as was mentioned uh, uh, in the previous slide, uh, the, the viewing is, at the moment is um, only available for selected sets of uh, Sentinel-2 L2-1 and Sentinel-1 L1 GRD data. So, uh, well, it's not available for all of them, but we are working on making it available across the whole, uh, the whole archive. Okay, so uh, that, that is for uh, data, let's say. Uh, now the third part is toolboxes and services. Um, again, what we want is to provide you absolutely everything in, in a single place for you to concentrate, to, to go fast and concentrate on your work, which is, let's say, scientific expertise uh, to, uh, to to perform, let's say, or to, to implement your project or, or your service that you would like to, uh, to, to, to market uh, after. So uh, we also provide, as I said, a Kubernetes cluster. That's one of the, uh, of the many services we have gone through. For your information, we can provide them in two, in two ways. We can provide the cluster, the Kubernetes cluster as, let's say, a delivery. Uh, which is uh, fully configured, ready to run for you. Of course, we have a dialogue for you, with you to configure it the way you want it. Or you can access it through a, a service which is provided by, uh, by uh, Orange. Uh, it's your choice. The, the main difference between them is that uh, the, uh, the delivery, uh, the, the Kubernetes cluster that we deliver uh, embarks is in fact the uh, the Kubernetes cluster that we uh, at SoBlue use, and in, it embarks, let's say, uh, a pretty well secured, let me say this, uh, or a very well secured operating system, uh, which might be of interest to you. Whereas the uh, the self service embarks, let, let's say, a normal operating system with with no specific, no less, no more uh, security uh, measures. Um, so you can choose from these two. Uh, we also give access to what we call macro services, uh, such as RabbitMQ, Kafka, etcd. Well, uh, there are now more than 180, so I'm not going through all of them. But, uh, well, there again, the, uh, the idea behind is to facilitate the access to this kind of tools and services so that you can really get fast into your work. Uh, we provide also what we call uh, the SoBlue desktop. Um, well, this is to facilitate your daily work to, let's say, uh, stop going through the, uh, the command lines. Uh, and it also comes with uh, uh, more than 30 or about 30 tools, such as uh, the very well-known, let's say, Snap, uh, Brat, OTB, QG, GDAL, uh, Jupyter Notebook, and so on. So uh, this is uh, this is there again very useful, and this is the uh, the feedback that we uh, that we get from our users. Uh, one last thing, well, in the list uh, we provide what we call the the SoBlue SDK, which is also known as EODAG. Uh, this SDK wraps SoBlue APIs there again to facilitate access to data. So you might want to go through the APIs themselves. Uh, you get all the flexibility and richness of these APIs, but also, let's say, you get a bit of complexity with it. Whereas this uh, this SDK uh, will uh, well has let's say preset uh, many of the uh, let's say the uh, the fields or parameters of the APIs, 
Of course, you keep some, let's say, uh, degrees of freedom, a bit less, but uh, this is to the benefit of, let's say, ease of use. So there again, it's up to you to choose between uh, the, the use of the full API or this, uh, this SDK. Um, well, I have presented about the, uh, the, the, uh, the resources, cloud resources, the data, the toolbox and services. Uh, well, let's say these are only tools, more or less. Uh, what we want also to, to, to do is to accompany you and help you to, to, to use them to the, uh, the full benefit. So uh, we provide uh, uh, as much uh, help as possible online. That is, uh, we provide a getting started guide for which I have, uh, I have given here the, uh, the URL. And we think it, it is very useful, let it be for you as a hackathon participant or as a general user. We think it's very useful to go through it. It's not long and it gives you re really a good overview of SoBlue, what you can do and how to do it. And then of course, we provide more, uh, let's say, uh, uh, dedicated or focused uh, tutos and documentation to accompany you through uh, many things, I guess, the most interesting for you as far as, uh, uh, well, as a hackathon uh, participant will be the, uh, the first, uh, let's say, four, how to authenticate uh, on SoBlue, generate an API and so on, but we will come back to, uh, uh, to this uh, a bit later. Another way of uh, helping you and, uh, and building a community on SoBlue is that we have set uh, a GitLab where uh, we provide what we call resources. Let, let this be uh, uh, source code, Docker files, uh, Docker images, which are ready to, uh, to, to use or reuse, and, and the wiki, of course, to share the documentation that I've just presented before. So I won't be going through uh, all the content of this GitLab. I can only invite you to go there and check what is available because in fact, well, first of all, it's public, otherwise it would have no interest. Uh, and in fact, you can go there, uh, clone, let's say, the, uh, the, uh, the source code, which is of interest to you. Uh, you can uh, modify it, update it, of course, to fit uh, to your needs and, uh, and, and use it in your code, let's say. Or you can choose to, uh, to use uh, pre-configured, ready-to-go images, which is even faster. Uh, so reversely, uh, if you at some stage uh, build some code which you are proud of or which you find smart and useful to the community, well, we invite you to, uh, to, uh, to contact us so you, that you can share it on the, on the GitLab and be part of, uh, of SoBlue community because we really believe in building, uh, well, a community will help build uh, an ecosystem around uh, around the platform. So uh, the last point, well, not exactly last, but uh, another point is the marketplace. Uh, well, this is where you find all the services which are available from SoBlue, and uh, just in a couple of clicks, uh, you will find it. Uh, I, we believe it's really user friendly. Uh, well, you can find uh, it's structured as a data infrastructure platform and software and tools. So it's, it's pretty easy to find what you need. And uh, uh, well, be informed that you can find, uh, well, many, most of them at the moment are uh, services which are free or some of them are billable, uh, depending, of course, on the uh, on the uh, agreements that we have with our partners. So you can find, let's say, what you need, but you can also market your services to the whole world. Uh, what All that we need is just, uh, well, uh, a quick description, a full description, of course, but not, not too long. Uh, you specify your pricing scheme and prices. We, we see how to provide access to your service. It can be running on SoBlue most of the time. That is the case. But it can be, uh, if necessary, running on a separate uh, on a separate uh, platform, which is less interesting uh, because it's not really part of the ecosystem. Uh, but in any case, this is where uh, we we have designed this marketplace as being a, a meeting point to foster business, to generate ideas, and so on. 
between service providers. Service meaning uh, it can be data, it can be uh, uh, software and tools. It's not necessarily like a, a billable service. Uh, well, to, to build an ecosystem around the platform so that users, uh, let's say final users or intermediate users uh, can, uh, can benefit from this. And of course, uh, you can, well, the one way of doing this is that if you have data that you would like to broadcast to the world, well, it can be integrated in our uh, SoBlue catalog or it can be set aside depending on your will and present it to the whole world or to a restricted community as you wish. So the, uh, the marketplace is really where, uh, well, you can address the world in, uh, that, like in, a, in a very easy way. Next, uh, well, professional services. Uh, well, we offer, uh, as Wendy said, uh, we do, uh, the, sorry, the, the, the partners in SoBlue are Airbus, uh, Capgemini, and Orange. And uh, with the help of, uh, of course, CLS and Vito, CLS being, let's say, the reference as far as marine um, core service is concerned, and Vito uh, for land. So let's say our team is very uh, complementary and covers absolutely all aspects of uh, let's say earth observation, let it be technically speaking or uh, even uh, business wise. So that is why we can propose uh, technical and thematic support on the catalog, on the data, uh, expertise and so on, on the, uh, the cloud uh, as such, because well, it's part of the, uh, uh, it might be part of your needs. Uh, but we also, we are able also to accompany you uh, along the, let's say, the, the commercialization of your service, that is through, uh, well, promotion activities or uh, market analysis uh, and so on. So we do cover the whole panel and, uh, well, you are welcome to contact us on any of these, uh, on these topics. Well, I guess, uh, Wendy, maybe I'll give you the hand back. Yeah, perfect. Uh, thank you, Christophe. Uh, so as we were presenting for the past half hour on the SoBlue side, uh, just a summary of the main reasons why, uh, uh, why you should be choosing uh, SoBlue. So of course, the Copernicus data access that we have been discussing quite extensively, uh, access to Copernicus Sentinel and Copernicus Core Services. It's also access to uh, more broader um, data sets from what Christoph was mentioning on the French space agency CNES Muscat uh, products, but it's also uh, high resolution and very high resolution data. This developers environment that you've been introduced to quite extensively and uh, the fact that in the professional services that Christoph just mentioned, it's all this expertise basically at your fingertips in terms of having access to support to uh, the development of algorithms, to technical and more digital transformation support, to consultancy, marketing, business support, et cetera. And this marketplace where uh, we put people together to share their ideas, to share their products, but also to promote uh, their products and uh, commercialize them. And uh, I know that it's Friday afternoon and that it's nearing uh, five o'clock, so, uh, a few words perhaps about the smart cities aspect that you guys will be working on during uh, the hackathon. Uh, so of course cities is a big topic and it's been a growing topic in a huge number of policy areas simply because by 2030 two-thirds of the world population will be living in cities and this is an unprecedented growth compared to other I would say urbanization strands that have been experienced uh, globally. And this expansion uh, is leading to a number of challenges that we're facing. So you probably are all concerned by congestion problems and traffic uh, and such, but beyond that, it's also infrastructure management because there are more and more buildings, more and more uh, sewers, more and more small things that need to empower and connect the different buildings that we see, uh, which puts an increased pressure on the environment in terms of uh, respecting the resources that, uh, that we live in. And um, this overall trend around public service delivery to say, well, if cities are becoming bigger and bigger, how is it that we have continuous um, public service delivery, whether it's about quality of life and, or education or 
uh, hospital services, care facilities, emergency services, and overall safety as well, to say that there's an increase, for instance, in, uh, in criminality and violence in certain cities that are expanding so fast that there are actually complete black zones where there's very little amount of access to, to data or access to, to areas, I'm thinking in particular to slums and such. So it's not all that gloomy. And uh, if I can go to the next one. Yeah, thank you. Oop, the one right before. Uh, there's a lot of thinking around what space data can do for smart cities. So here, uh, there are a number of initiatives at the European level for smart cities, but also for leveraging Earth observation and census data for smart cities. So if I go to the next one, here what I uh, use are what we call the European Innovation Program Smart Cities and Communities uh, Initiative, where there's a very specific field of activities um, about leveraging Earth observation data to enhance what they call quality of life. To say, if we look at all of this together, uh, smart cities are about making sure that we have the utmost best quality of life in different aspects. And what I really like about the structure developed by the Smart Cities Communities Initiative is that they've looked at three specific angles. The first one is around what they call the efficient city. So that is urban planning. And here in urban planning, you can find land cover, classification, interaction, and checks using earth observation data and cadastral maps, for instance, or property tax evaluation, also transport and mobility. So, you know, transport and mobility is a big thing. We all uh, have cars or take public transport. So what modeling can be done to make the infrastructure evolve? How can we model traffic analysis? How can we model the use of parking and develop parking uh, related applications, for instance? building an infrastructure. So that's the overall infrastructure mapping uh, as it is today, but it's also uh, providing specific information on vulnerable or so-called critical infrastructure as well. Uh, planning and monitoring construction sites. We're seeing there's more and more satellite imagery used to monitor the development of, uh, of certain very, very large construction areas. Uh, one project that we've been involved in is for instance, producing satellite imagery that uh, monitored the growth of certain uh, urban areas in uh, in Dubai, in the United Arab uh, Emirates. So it's quite interesting to see the city grow uh, over the desert. Um, another, uh, I would say, axis of this uh, Earth Observation Smart Cities Communities approach is around clean city. And here, typically, it's about air quality, temper uh, temperature uh, monitoring, atmospheric measurement that we can now do. Uh, there's been a lot on social media about uh, Sentinel-5P uses, for instance, here, but also waste management to see how can we tra track illegal dump sites, uh, waste tracking and, uh, and such. Green areas monitoring, so you've probably been involved in uh, when you start using satellite imagery, you can identify parks easily, forests, but also vegetation cover, the biosphere um, and such like. Energy as well, where we are witnessing an increased number of initiatives around estimating uh, the solar energy uh, and uh, overall solar energy assessments, uh, wind power stations as well. We were supporting uh, a project led by a company called Spotted, identifying uh, where are the best places to place uh, to position wind farms, and everything around smart grids. So how to adapt uh, the power generation to the consumption, to the environment, to, uh, to the climate, et cetera. The third uh, focus of this initiative is around safe and resilient city, which is more around disasters and security in soil and water management. So typical examples around uh, uh, disaster and security are around natural disaster management. So that can be in the context of of uh, a fire that can be uh, in the context of coordinated emergency and rescue services organization, uh, oil spills, for instance, although that might be less relevant in a, in a city context, but uh, in uh, port areas, it's quite interesting to, to see using satellite imagery, how the movement of, of, uh, of vessels is actually going to uh, create either minor oil spills or displacements in um, in the near ocean level, which then have an impact on the quality of the beaches and uh, uh, of, of these cities. 
on the soil and water. So this is more about soil uh, morphology, soil cover, uh, and uh, other sort of more sea related activities. But then this is more like ocean related as opposed to like port or, or, or beaches. So this is just to give you a flavor on um, how space data can be used for the for cities. And uh, it's a bit um, about saying that all of this is really at the beginning because it's actually quite recent to to have access to such a huge amount of earth observation data as well as the, as the capacity to process it and uh, if you want to feel inspired i would uh, welcome you to take a look at the eip smart cities and communities websites to uh, maybe get a few ideas of what could be useful in the areas where where you live in or that could help solve some of your specific uh, specific challenges as well uh, a final slide on the uh, earth observation applications for urban planning and uh, risk management. So I won't go into the details of everything that's in, in the presentation, but just to give you an idea of the diversity of the end users, because an application uh, is also about how this serves the need of, of a given community. So typical users of urban planning information uh, can be architects, can be civil engineers, can be public administrations, governments, any commercial user pretty much. Uh, likewise for urban risk management, it's it's pretty much the same type of end users. And um, every time the key benefits are more around uh, helping provide what we call evidence-based policy making or evidence-based decision making. And to, to some extent, protect and help protect the environment and sustain uh, the resources that we are that we are consuming equally on the risk management more about early warning anticipation but also uh, emergency services and there's been a huge amount of activities over the summer in the course of uh, of uh, for instance fires uh, and other uh, emergencies but this can also be the case for landslides or for, for earthquakes so uh, to stay on the positive side, it's really about uh, the, the creativity that can be used and put forward. And I will just hand over to Christoph back for the conclusion on uh, a few tips and tricks that we would like to give you uh, under what we've called essentials for the hackathon. So uh, I'll hand over back to Christoph. OK, thank you. Um, okay, so we'll be, uh, because we're, well, we're left with, let's say, uh, five minutes. I'll be quick. Anyway, you'll have the, uh, the, uh, the slides for uh, reference. Um, maybe I could have the, uh, the controls back, Aloha, if, if you may. Or if you can go just through uh, to, to the next mail, no problem. Uh, slide, sorry. Okay. Uh, well, tip number one, well, I have presented this uh, this slide already. Uh, just tip number one is uh, you can choose, let's say, the uh, the explorer, uh, the sorry, uh, the web browser uh, you wish. Uh, just just keep in mind that e Internet Explorer is not recommended, so don't be uh, don't be surprised. Uh, as far as the uh, tutorials are concerned, again, the, uh, the Getting Started Guide and the first four would be of, uh, of interest to you, I believe. The, for accessing the data, so uh, Copernicus data, well, this is directly on SoBlue through the catalog or the APIs, and you can use, if necessary, the online tutorials. For the Airbus commercial data, because we do provide access to this data during the, uh, the hackathon, even though this data is not yet fully integrated in, uh, in SoBlue, then uh, you can go and find it on the One Atlas sandbox. Uh, we provided the URL, but just be careful. You will need to register a couple of days in advance. It's, it's done in a couple of click, really. Uh, and please specify that you are uh, coming for the uh, Barcelona Copernicus Hackathon in the, uh, in the field, uh, uh, your project. Uh, this will help. Uh, uh, let's say uh, speed up the uh, the uh, taking into account of your request. And as far as uh, Muscat is concerned, you can go well. It is accessible through SoBlue at the uh, URL there. Uh, 
Uh, again, you don't, well, if you go on to SoBlue uh, on the marketplace, you will find the, uh, the direct access. I just provided it for, uh, for, let's say, for ease of use. Uh, well, to download the data, you will need uh, to be logged in. And for this, well, it's quite simple. I won't be going through uh, the explanations here. You can go through them uh, after, but it's again, it's quite simple. Uh, it's like uh, registering on uh, Google or whatever. So uh, not much to say. We just there again provided this for uh, for ease, for your ease of use. Um, the next one is well, then uh, a third tip is that you need to uh, create what we call an API key to download data through the APIs. If you download data only through from the through the catalog, no problem, you don't need. But if you want to go uh, to use the APIs, you need to create one. There again, it's quite simple. Just follow the steps here. And uh, well, this is generated, let's say, instantaneously. So no, uh, no worries. Um, by the way, let me mention that in the same, uh, at the same place, under personal information, you will be able to subscribe to our newsletter if, uh, if you wish to receive it. Uh, well, even further down now in the uh, explanation, uh, if you want to uh, download data from our catalog uh, web UI, uh, you just need to be logged in. You don't need an API key. And uh, well, once you have searched the data and find found uh, the uh, the one that is of interest to you, you just need to click on the uh, on the uh, thumbnail uh, representing the image that you would like to to download. Uh, well, then you will get let's say a more detailed uh, uh, preview of the uh, the image that you selected. Uh, and if you really want to download it, uh, well, just click on the uh, information and on the little cloud. And then the uh, the, um, the 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 data, the sorry, the um, product will be downloaded automatically for you, and it will be downloaded for you. Let it be present on the local storage or not, which means then that the system will turn back to the original data source and fetch it for you if it's not already locally available. Uh, well, I guess we're getting to the end. If you want to go and use the APIs, well, as we said, well, first of all, the reminder, uh, you need the API key. So just generate it to think of generating it before. And then, as we said before, there is a bit more complexity in the, in the use of the APIs. So I would advise you to go to, to refer to the, uh, to the tutorials. Um, and as I said, there are code, code examples uh, available. Uh, just go under the, uh, go, go to our GitLab and uh, you can find them also. Well, support during the hackathon in case you need it. We have uh, one of our technical experts will, uh, will be available online during the hackathon on Saturday from 11 to, uh, to uh, 1 p.m. So don't hesitate to, uh, to uh, ask him questions. And uh, more generally speaking, let it be during the hackathon or after. Uh, if you need more information about SoBlue, if you want to start your project with us, just contact us. Well, you can contact myself or Wendy uh, directly, uh, but we provide, let's say, uh, uh, a general um, uh, address so that you are sure that so if, even if I'm not present or Wendy is not present, you are sure that somebody will take care of your request. I think this is the, the last uh, but not least, of course, uh, uh, slide of the presentation. Uh, here's a quick look at the, uh, the, the prize that we offer to the, uh, to the winner. Um, well, three months subscription to Soblu for free, and this includes, uh, well, uh, quite a large number of VMs. Uh, five, if I, yes, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the type of VM we can adapt because, uh, well, let's say that's the, uh, the standard uh, uh, offer that we make, but we can adapt your needs. Uh, and then the, uh, the tenant will be installed with uh, Linux, with, uh, well, GitLab, of course, uh, SoBlue SDK and desktop. So again, uh, we provide you most of uh, what you need. And of course, you can install more on top of it, but uh, let's say we, we, we lay the foundation for your, uh, for your work. Uh, we will also uh, 
promote the winning team, uh, let's say their project or services on the website and through all our communication means. And we will, uh, let's say, um, um, provide uh, technical and marketing support during these, these uh, three months. So uh, really we, uh, we will do, let's say, everything that we can to help you build your service and uh, hopefully uh, market it, get it known so that you can, uh, you can go further down the road uh, with us. I believe this is it. So this is, time is now for uh, question and answers. Uh, well, as far as we are concerned, we'll take uh, all the time that is necessary to answer them. Yeah, but still, if you have got any questions, please you know, speak to write them down. Uh, Loha, I can hardly hear you. Can you hear me right now? Yeah. Yes, much better. It's much better. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much, Christoph. Uh, I was saying that uh, if the participants have got any questions, so please do not hesitate to write them down. We already have one question from Jean. He's asking what is the most relevant difference between Soblu's offer and research and user support or US. I know okay. If you well, know. Uh, in fact, this is quite uh, quite different. Uh, well, I, I believe the the question is not specifically applicable to uh, to so blue. It's probably applicable to all the uh, uh, to all the DAS. Um, mm -hmm. Well, again, uh, well, to my knowledge, Rus Rus is uh, uh, first of all um, well managed by let's say uh, uh cs but managed under the uh, uh the decision of uh isa uh, and is mostly made available to uh, researchers whereas and uh whereas uh, as far as the us are concerned uh first of all we do embark uh data which is not specifically uh, copernicus or uh, sentinel data but uh, it can be commercial data. It can be. It can even be non-EO related data. As Wendy uh, mentioned, uh, we will soon offer uh, what we call Fluvision data, which is uh, uh, statistical data about the uh, the moves uh, of the uh, let's say of a population over an area based on uh, mobile cells uh, phones. Um, and uh, and in fact, we we are we are also there to uh, to build, and this is one of the uh, uh, let's say the uh, the target of the uh, European Commission is to build uh, ecosystems around the uh, Earth observation world, let's say, uh, and even further, uh, which I don't believe is the uh, is the uh, the target of Rus. Um, really, we are here to uh, foster business. Whereas Rus would be more oriented, let's say, on research, and uh, I believe in a more limited way as far as data and maybe tools, but I'm not, I'm not an expert of Rus, are concerned. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, there is another question. Um, is Soblu as flexible as Rus? Uh, well, uh, I. Honestly, I'm not I'm not a Rus user, so I'm not able to answer this uh, this uh, this question. Uh, but again, well, of I course think you can do some marketing of Sublu, right? Saying yeah. <laughs> uh, well, of course. Uh, uh, but I, well, if if I well, what I want, I can say yes, but I would like to be more practical. So uh, uh, again, I believe this is not. Uh, this question is not specifically applicable to so blue, but to all the ass. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I do believe that. Well, I do believe that so blue is really flexible because um, we provide. Let's say we are based on Orange uh, public cloud um, solution. Uh, I know that Rus can be uh, uh, on can run on uh, the Orange cloud, uh, so we are at least as flexible as this. And again, uh, I think we do provide more uh, data services, uh, let's say accompaniment or support than can be done uh, on Rus. And I'm not aware of, let's say, uh, 
uh, of the future for, for us, but uh, be sure that we will be there as far as uh, SoBlue, and this is specific to SoBlue, be sure that we will be there for the next three years, which are, uh, let's say, which will bring us to the end of the contract with ESA, but we are definitely, because we are Airbus, a major player uh, on Earth observation, because we are Orange, a major player on the cloud part, because we are Capgemini, a major player in, let's say, at scientific applications and business development uh, in the Earth observation, we do we have invested uh, to go well beyond these three years, and this is, uh, I think, uh, a real dif differentiator, uh, at least uh, compared to Rus and maybe to the other DS also, because we are not here just for the duration of the uh, of the contract, but we are definitely there uh, for long because we do believe in the digitalization of Earth observation business and. Uh, mm -hmm. Soblu investment is going way beyond, really way beyond uh, what uh, ESA and the European community have uh, kick-started, let's say. Yeah, thank you so much. So um, I think we do not, um, yeah, there is no other questions from participant side. So um, it is an absolute pr privilege to have you today with us. Um, thank you so much for your time and effort. Hopefully some concerns of the participants regarding accessing data have been solved by now. Uh, I would like also to thank our participants who um, were patient um, and actually um, attended uh, today's webinar. I would like to encourage you to also um, attend uh, the webinars on the 29th and 30th of April, which are um, going to be uh, related to some business um, business skills or business knowledge. But I believe that it's important uh, for an idea, a brilliant idea, to when um, to uh, have like some to combine technical knowledge with some business knowledge. Um, so that is. That's it for today. Thank you so much, uh, Mario, Wendy, and Christoph. Um, I will share your contacts uh, with the participants uh, for any questions. But as uh, Wendy and Christoph, they already mentioned, we will have uh, technical support on the hackathon day. Um, but if you have any other concerns or questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it from our side. Uh, have a good day and um, bye. Well, thanks a million, Iloha, for the organization that went really smooth. Uh, very much appreciated. Thanks to everybody for uh, well staying with us until the end. And uh, well, hopefully we'll see you on uh, on So Blue uh, very soon. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. See you on Onda. Bye bye. 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 <laughs>